So I came along with this. So uh, I, I YouTube gave me a feed. I guess I'm looking for a used car or something. So I came along with, you know, I came up with this used car salesman. And he's complaining about this guy calling him out of 500 bucks. Now, I, I didn't uh, did, uh, subscribe to this guy because they, uh, you know, the, these guys, good. I'm glad the guy uh, got him for 500 bucks. You know what pisses me off about used car salesmen is they lie, they lie, uh, they lie about everything. This guy thinks people lie to him. Well, used car, <laughs> that's, that's the nature of the game. My, uh, people lie to me all the time in my business, but I don't try to cheat them out of money. You know, I, you know, I sign the contract, fine. If something's wrong with the house, fine. I, you know, uh, if, if something, you know, uh, is, you know, I, I got to uh, put a new roof on the house, that's fifteen twenty thousand dollars. Well, I might lose the money on the deal. This guy, you know what pisses me off? Not because he's a used car that salesman. He he is. I I understand. He 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 talks fast. He's he's faster than I. He talks fast. I'm putting a little uh, video. Uh, after I, you know, but you'll see, it's a half hour video how this black guy uh, conned him out of 500 bucks. Now, the funny thing is, I, I you know, I, 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 I screamed at the goddamn, uh, screamed at the, um, you know, computer screen. Now, I understand you're trying to buy and sell cars on YouTube and stuff like this, but you'll get to the point of this video. This, this really, this, this really, this. Okay, there's he bought a boat for I think sixty five hundred bucks. So he puts new engine in it, cleans it up. And claims that it's worth forty thousand dollars. This used piece of shit boat. Now these you yeah, I a blue book on the boat so like maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars used. I know boats. You know, this this is a skiing boat. Now he wants forty thousand dollars for this piece of shit this is why i can't stand used cars man used car and believe me there's scumbags in my my in the real estate game from the from the uh, real estate brokers telling me i can't do it from the the uh um you know uh Owners telling me to go fuck myself because I low them too much. You know, uh, uh, you know, the title company wants more money. Uh, the, the, uh, the, everyone wants a buck, even the uh, freaking county of uh, um, Palm Beach and. Uh, Citrus County, where I, you know, go back and forth every, you know, once in a while to, from, you know, to, from California. I mean, not California, but Palm Beach and up North Florida. Anyway, to get back to the story, I, I'm pissed. I can't really. You know, 
I, you know, I can't really, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, I can't really, um, you know, look at them and, you know, because the, my software won't do it, but, you know, it's about 39 minutes long. You'll laugh about it. Like I did we get, when you get to the boat, okay. Get, when you get to the boat, you'll start laughing at him. When you get to the boat, you'll see the boat. He, he tells people what he paid for it in the first place. Okay. Then he, he goes, it's, and then it's a $40,000 boat. And he, he, oh man. Then he sells Corvettes and all, you know, you know, use car shit from, uh, from uh, Texas when it flooded. <laughs> so, so he's selling these wholesale cars, you know, uh, you know, networking, that's good, but he expects this guy to pay him, I, I don't know, but he, this black guy cons him out of 500 bucks, I guess. And he gets on the phone and complains about the 500 bucks. Well, you just try to con people into a $40,000 boat, you asshole. <laughs> you know, I understand you're trying to make a buck, but if you don't like what you you want, doing for a living, get, get the fuck out. You know, if you don't want to be a fucking call use causeman, you know, don't, then get the fuck out. Or don't complain. You know, don't complain. I, I you know, if, if this is just bullshit, don't complain. And, you know, he's a fast talker. He, he talks fast. That's why uh, what I'm laughing about, too. He He's a typical salesman. He has to talk fast and come on you faster. When people, when people talk fast in the uh, sales world, any sales, you know, from, uh, from uh, used car salesman, to uh, what I do, real estate. The guy is a talk, a talk, you know, talk fast talker. Run, run a mile away. Anyway, I will let you see the video. When you come up to the uh, boat, you'll see what I mean. I I screamed at this. I I, I just, you know, I looked at him and I said, I even commented. I said. Go fuck yourself, you know, in his comments. I'm glad the guy g gave you a little runaround for $500. I, I wish he conned you out of the whole fucking price. Fucking scumbag. Anyway, let, let me let you go into the video. No, I have no car. Where's your car? I don't have a car. You don't have a Corvette anymore? Nope. What happened to no it? Car. I just don't have no car. What happened to it? I just don't have no car. I never had a car. You never had a car. This is Melvin, right? Oh, he hung up on me. Oh my God. That's the people I work with. This right here is Melvin Keith Johnson. Melvin Johnson tried to steal a Corvette from me multiple ways and he played it as the nice guy role too as he was the one getting scammed. He was cautious because he doesn't want to get scammed. Now a guy from New York tried to buy a Corvette out of state. He tried to have it shipped to him. I can't do that because of just the way the scenario seemed. It just seemed odd and I made him come pick it up and I'm glad I did because he only managed to scam me out of a small amount of money and not $36,000. And in today's video I'm going to teach you how Melvin Johnson and me and how he got away with scamming me out of some of that money. Today's video, like real bummer. This is why I don't trust people. This is why I have trust issues. And this is honestly why I'm such a dick to people with such short patience sometimes. People lie to me all the time. I am a used car dealer and usually used car dealers are the ones with the bad names. I'm telling you right now, buyers are liars. We are the first person that people 
don't care to take advantage of and lie to. And that's expected, sadly. Like trade-ins, people trade in, they forget to tell me the things that are wrong with it and then I have to find it and then if I don't find it and I sell it and the next owner finds out what the problem was that was skimmed past me, then I'm the bad guy that sold the lemon. That isn't what this video is about. That happens, that is the business I'm in. Today, somebody scammed me. Somebody tried to steal a Corvette. See this blue Corvette? No, not this blue Corvette, this blue Corvette. Well, this blue Corvette, a friend of mine took in on trade and said, Craig, this car is right up your alley. Would you be interested in buying it from us? We don't sell this type of stuff. Would you be interested in buying it? And then you can sell it. Yeah, absolutely. The car is perfect. It is a brand new Corvette. And that was part one, buying a reconstructed title Corvette. Now, part two is today's video where somebody from New York tried to scam us and steal a Corvette from us. And I'm gonna tell you all about the story in today's video. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I'm telling you right now, this business is tough. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna expose the guy that tried to steal the Corvette because I know who you are. And also, I don't want this to happen to any of you guys watching this video. So I'm gonna show you how I protected myself. I still ended up losing a little bit and I'm gonna tell you how and why in today's video. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I know you enjoy my misery, so let's get going. Chevy Corvette, Nissan Skyline, Chevy Camaro, and I have some other fun cars too. I really enjoy this job sometimes, but to be quite honest with you, I don't trust people. I have trust issues and I have a very patient, let's call it. I don't have a lot of patience with people. Why? Because being in this industry, being a used car dealer is exhausting. It is exhausting. I am constantly lied to. And imagine just in your life, if you've ever tried to sell a car or buy a car or go on Facebook Marketplace and sell anything, it's exhausting. People and the public are are exhausting and I do it for a living. This is my every single day job. I chat with people on Facebook Marketplace every day. I negotiate with people every single day. I buy cars that need work every single day and I have to find those problems and I fix them. And if I don't fix them and I sell the car by accident, like if I missed it, I'm a bad guy. Or if I don't fix it and then I sell the car at a discount for someone else to fix it and it's more than what they anticipated in the negotiation, then I'm still a bad guy. That's the job, all right? And it has worn me down and I am sure short, like not short tempered, I don't have a temper, but I'm short with people and I don't have patience with people. And to be quite honest with you and to say it perfectly, I'm a dick now. I didn't used to be a dick. I used to be happy go lucky. I used to be a people person. Now I'm a dick and I don't want to be. And it's because of stories like today that make me be a dick all the time. And I don't want to be a dick, but here's the story that made me who I am because it's stuff like this that happens all the time that just sours you over time. Now, if you watched my last video, I told you all about the Corvette with a reconstructed title that we bought and we cleaned it up and the car was awesome. Before I jump into it, I want to show you Melvin Johnson from my previous video because he seems like such a swell guy, so happy to make a video and talk about me and how great we are. Here's Melvin Johnson right now. You were straight everything you say. It's like brand new, smell brand new, drive brand new, okay? And I'm telling you, I was typical. I, I drove six hours, you know, it was on the back of my head. Let me tell you something. I will be buying another car from you. I will be sending you customers. This ain't, you know, I'm not saying just be saying. I'm sending from my heart. You're a good person. You're fair. You're honest. You can't get no honest than you is, okay? A person got to drive six hours, okay? You treat like family. Not soon I met you, treat me, treat me like family. I you was you, you was like a negative. Everything was positive. You know what I'm trying to say? I you owe a lot of that good. to Lauren over you know, there too. Made, she took made, care of most of it. You made, for you made me. me feel good. You know, you made me yeah. feel good. I'm going home good, okay? Soon I get home, I'm taking your, I'm taking your card. Guess what? I'm gonna be your salesman up north. So he's part of a Corvette club, and Corvette guys talk to each other. Talk to each other. So if you treat one Corvette guy right, they spread the word to everybody, which is exactly. really helpful. I actually, that isn't why I turned my camera on for you to say what you just said that's a, an incredible review so thank you very much for that no i really problem. appreciate it all right let's get this thing loaded up right. enough with the camera well you saw that and now i want to show you the real story and what happened after he left with the Corvette. So the Corvette is sold and gone. It is over to New York and I got scammed. Now I'm gonna use this Corvette as an example even though this isn't the Corvette I'm talking about in today's video. Now the one drawback to this car is that it had a reconstructed title from a minor water damage in Texas like when it was one year old. So for six years it's been driven like whatever 15,000 miles. Now I pulled the Carfax for it. It had a good Carfax aside from the water damage. I could find no water damage anywhere in the car and I showed you in video number one like any damage that we found and reported. And then when I listed it for sale, I wrote it in the ad. I was very descriptive. Like with reconstructed titles, you have to be upfront with people. You can't send it on their way, hope they pay all the money. It's gonna come back to bite you. So I am always honest upfront and I even show the car facts and say the history in the description. And then when people call, they make sure they know what it is. There is nothing to be confused about when you buy a reconstructed car from us. Now it isn't something we always sell because they're, I would prefer to sell clean title cars. If I find a good solid car, that's a great value that looks like it was repaired correctly, I'm not afraid of it. This man calls me, not Melvin John. 
Johnson. His brother calls me. This man calls me and he calls me from upstate New York and says, Craig, I own a dealership in upstate New York. My brother's interested in this car. Would you consider wholesaling it to me? So I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll wholesale it to you, whatever. I mean, I don't want to give the thing away, but would you be interested in wholesaling? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. It's like, would you take 30? I'm like, no, no, I wouldn't take 30, no. The car is too nice. I, I, there's no $10,000 buffer. Like this boat, I'm asking 40. It's fixed. If you haven't seen all the videos yet, the hull is fixed. The engine's brand new. I paid $6,200 for the hull to get fixed. I feel comfortable selling this at 40,000 because it is an awesome boat now. Any problems that it has had, I've had with the boat and I've fixed. So the next owner will love this boat. Same with the Corvette. Like I've driven this car enough to know that it's a great car. I put a few hundred miles on it and I don't need to take $10,000 off the price of the car. So it's like, what about 36? No financing. You make it easy. You come up here. You don't give me any headaches. I'll wholesale to your dealership. 36,000. That works. Let's do it. He goes, all right, it's for my brother. I'm going to have my brother call you. So we get a call. Beep, boop, bop. Hey, Craig, this is Melvin. Uh, I want to buy that Corvette. I'm going to come up with a truck and a trailer next weekend. I'm going to buy it. So I'm like, Craig, I'm coming up this Saturday. I'll pick it up and it's gone. It's out of your hair. I'm like, perfect. Easy. Send me your information. He's like, all right, it's going to my sister's name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought you were wholesaling it. I thought I was wholesaling it to your brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted it in my sister's name instead. So I'm like, well, is your sister coming up? He's like, no, she won't be able to make it. All right. So now we have some red flags. He's kind of being a pain in the butt now at this point. Why? So we're not wholesaling it to his brother and the buyer isn't the one buying it. This is like red flagged and it's a little strange. So Melvin sees the video and he says, all right, Craig, I definitely want it. I'll be up this weekend. Don't sell it on me. I'm like, hey man, if someone shows up with cash, I'm selling this thing. I'm not going to hold it and hope that Melvin Johnson shows up. No, no, no. I'll be there. He's like, I'll give you $500 on a card if you hold it for me. I'm like, all right couple days away. You seem pretty uh, in interested. Let's do that. So Lauren takes the card over the phone. The card, we run it. It clears. We already have a copy of his driver's license. All is good. Fast forward to Saturday. Melvin seems like one of the nicest guys in the world. He comes in, he's happy. He's got his U-Haul rental truck. He's got his U-Haul rental trailer. And he looks at the car and says, Craig, you will straight everything you say. It's like brand new smell, brand new, drive brand new. Now I have to pay in payments. I'm like, no. No, you or your brother said you're bringing cash. Now I'd have to report it if he paid all cash. I had told him, Melvin, listen, the only way you're getting this car is if you wire me all the money in advance so I can see it in my bank account or you're not taking the car or the title or you bring me $100 bills because I'm not letting my car go to upstate Syracuse or Rochester, New York and hope your money goes through. Hope your check is good. Now I want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but in this video you can see I can't because people lie to me nonstop. I have another video about someone else that was completely cheating me and lying to me before. That hasn't aired yet. So well, Melvin, you either wire me the money and I see it in my bank account before you get here or you bring me $100 bills and that's the only option. Melvin walks in the door Saturday. Craig, that is the car you said it is. I'll take it. Perfect. All right, Lauren will take care of all the paperwork. Well, Lauren starts counting the cash with me. We have a cash counter. We have a counterfeit machine. We do everything. He gives me $15,000 in cash. I'm like, Melvin, you're a little short, buddy. He's like, well, I gave you $500 on a credit card too. I'm like, yeah, you did. Yeah. So now we're at fifteen five. He's like, all right, here's another $500 on a credit card. Swipe his card. All right, now we're at 16. Now what sucks about credit cards is the fee. On a $500, that's like $30, $35 on credit card fees. So he's swiping two cards, $500 each. He, the first one was manual, the second one we swipe. Lauren is back. What happened when Melvin said he had all the cash and he remember he was checking his pockets? Yes. Tell me about that for a second. So it's not just me telling a story. So he checked his pockets and he said that he did have all the cash, that he laid it out all on the desk and then said he didn't have all the cash? Again. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say, yeah, she's pretty accurate. Yeah. So he lays all the cash on the table and must have thought we weren't going to count the cash. Yes. So I count the cash and, and I'm like, he, hey, Mel Melvin, you're like in eight the cash grand counter. in the cash the counter. Cash I'm like, counter. And then I'm like, Melvin, you're like eight grand short. He's like, no, no, that can't be. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, you're like eight grand short. I'm going to run it. I just ran it, but I'm going to count 100 by 100 right in front of you and Lauren. So we all know no money has come off the table. No money has come out of the machine. No, no, no. It was all there. I count 100 to 1,000. Then 100 to 1,000. I lay it all on the table. He short $8,000 in cash. Now he also had to send us money on cash out and he zelled us, his like brother, the dealer zelled us some money. So his brother zelled us some money, which is fine. I don't mind zell because it's like a wire. So his brother zelled us a bunch of money that showed up in my account before Melvin even laid out the cash. So after his cash app from his daughter that, that he was on the phone with in our office, his daughter cash apped me, then his brother zelled me, then he put two $500 payments on a card and then he gave me enough cash that was short $8,000. Now he's like up in arms. 
arms. Oh, he was there. I'm like, dude, it's not there. I, I can't in front of you. It's not there. Calls his brother. Hey, what was his brother name? Do you remember? I have no idea. Hey, it wasn't all that cash in my pocket when I left. Oh yeah, it was. Well, now I'm short eight thousand dollars. Where did that money go? So this is the whole rigmarole of the. Oh wait, yep, we're just sitting around here waiting. Like, all right, well, it's not here. We're just gonna wait for him to do his whole drama thing, and then he's short. He's gotta figure it out somehow. Well, mysteriously, that eight thousand dollars shows up, right? Is yes. That, is that what happened? Yes. He like went out to his truck or reached in his pocket or whatever, and mysteriously, that eight thousand dollars showed up, and he pays for the car. It's paid in full, $36,000 between cash apps and Venmos and Zells and two credit cards and a wire and cash. I help him load the Corvette on the truck. I sweat underneath, make sure it's locked up, make sure the straps run right because he didn't really seem to know what he was doing. He talks about his Corvette club. He talks about how great we are. He talks about how he's gonna promote our business to his Corvette club and he loves working with honest people that are always up front. Usually these are red flags when people talk about scams or how like great you are. He was gonna put the flying wheels name in his Corvette club on the banner. Right. So I doubt that he did that. Right, I'm sure we're not on his Corvette club <laughs> on the like banner. It. So Melvin Johnson takes off. Next week, one week later, we get a letter from the credit card company. He charged back the credit card. Now, there's something I always say in these videos, CYA, cover your butt, right? I always cover my butt. So we have a Carfax history report right here. I gave him a copy of the Carfax history report showing the reconstructed title, but I keep a copy and I have him sign it because it says branded flood. So he knows, he signed it. He knows what it is. Now his sister's not here. Dakara Johnson is not in the office to sign everything. That's why I put it in both of their names. I need the person present here signing everything. So Melvin Johnson signs the Carfax. He's aware. Melvin Johnson signs the bill of sale. Here, I get a picture, Melvin Johnson, of your driver's license right there. I get both credit card receipts signed right there. And he signed the one that I ran over the phone as well. I got his signatures, I got his driver's licenses, I got everything. Well, he charges back his credit cards, both of them. I get the letter from the credit card company for the thousand bucks and you can't call. There's no phone number to call, so you're out of luck. So it's just faxing things back and forth. So I fax the driver's license, I fax the bill of sale, I fax the receipts signed with everything, everything they need, everything they requested, I, I get back. I sent, send over to them. Weeks go by, nothing. I get an, a tech, a fax back or an email back or whatever that says they're blurry. They're not blurry, first of all. And why are we using fax similes? Maybe that's why it's blurry because we're still using fax instead of email. So we clear them up, we darken them, I resend them. I get a letter here from the credit card company. Fraud card present environment. This is a notification. The allocation dispute initiated by the bank, JP Morgan Chase, is fraud card present environment. So I get a letter from JP Morgan Chase Bank that says, Dear Merchant, this notification is to form you of the action taken regarding the allocation reversal dispute. Fraudulent transaction processed as a face to face transaction. Without a signed, imprinted mag swipe or chip read sales draft, we cannot defend this case. Without a signed. So I said, It's signed. I Oh, it's signed. I finally got a number. It is signed. I have a copy of his driver's license. Yeah, but he wasn't here when you ran the card. You can only use the mag stripe or the chip reader to be protected. If you use a keyed code, keyed like you do it over the phone and then you type in the credit card, you cannot be protected as a merchant. I am not protected. They would not hear me out. They took the money out of my account. It's too bad for me. Go F myself, Craig, it's too bad. So I call Melvin Johnson and I say, hey Melvin, it's Craig flying with. This is what happened. So coincidentally, Melvin, the buyer that bought the 2015 Corvette that told me about his church and told us he was gonna put my name on the wall and what a great guy I am. He charged back his credit card after I asked if he why he wasn't using the same credit card. He said, oh, I got a new credit card. And I said, why did you get a new credit card? Oh, I lost my other one. So I said, did you charge back the $500 down payment that you put on your card? No, I wouldn't do that. So we got a letter back that said he charged back $500 on his card. We traced it to him. So I'm going to give him a call and see what's going on. Hey, Melvin, Craig, Flying Wheels with the Corvette. Yeah, Craig, I told you, I told you I'd get back home on time. Oh, yesterday. That was Wednesday, though. Yeah, I've been mean, working on time. I've been working on the road. I've been having a whole book. I've been working on the road. You're on the road. All right. So do you have a, a different card we could run? I don't got no cards on me right now. I don't travel with my car. I'm, I'm with the crew. Oh, okay. When do you think you'd be back so we can expect it? I'm just trying to figure it out so it doesn't get too long. I'll probably, I'll, if, if it wasn't wrapped up next Thursday, it's wrapped up. Okay. I don't want to. All right, so should I call you next Thursday? Yeah, I mean, yeah, go by the 
expect the rain. So they got they they they, 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 they landed us two days until the rain. Okay. Whose card was it that you used first? Was it yours or someone else's? Well, mine. It was yours. Okay. All right. No problem. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. That's why I don't trust people. And that's why I have trust issues, because everybody lies to me. I do not take PayPal. I very rarely take Cash App or Venmo. I do use Zelle. I do take certified and bank checks, and I take cash, and I take wires. But there is always a scam you have to watch out for, especially with Marketplace and all over the way. Like, somebody is always one step ahead of you. They always know the newest scam. And unfortunately, I don't know the newest scam until it's tried on me, and constantly, every single day. If you've ever been on Marketplace, you know how many scammers there are out there trying to get your, your Venmo information or your Facebook information or your bank information or even just your Google Voice phone number. It's incredibly frustrating to be able to just to have to keep up on all the fraud out there. And in this industry, like the car industry, it is constant. And this is a letter that I got for a chargeback for two transactions. Now what happened was Melvin Johnson called his credit card company and charged back both charges on the Corvette. Why? For no reason other than he wants his money back. Not like he doesn't want to return the car. He loves the car. It's registered and titled and he uses it just because he wants to scam me out of a thousand dollars. There's there's nothing wrong in this entire sales scenario. There's nothing wrong with the car. He still loves the car. He didn't offer to return the car back to me or anything. He just wants to try to scam me in multiple ways. And I'm going to keep going in this video and show you all the ways he didn't and the one way he did. And I hope it helps you guys so you don't get stuck in these situations as well. And you can see and watch out for the same red flag that I saw throughout this whole transaction. So I'm gonna repeat this. This is the Corvette that's scamming me. So this guy gave me a card over the phone. He came here and he signed the receipt. The card was in his name. I verified his driver's license and his signature. He charged it back and he's right because I keyed it in first. And I, I can say, I just know that, you know, it wants the, uh, that you keyed it in and there's nothing that can be done according to what that letter says. And even though he signed it and I he provided me his driver's license, I'm unprotected because I keyed it in. Yes, you keyed a transaction, yes. And the bill of sale that shows he purchased it with his driver's license that matches the credit card that he used, still too bad for me. Listen, you see, that's what I'm saying. You used to say right now, if I give you a credit card and I say that I'm, you know, John Doe, and I find my credit card and I show up there, and if you actually look at the picture and say, that's not you, how are you going to know? Because John Doe is the one that gave me the credit card over the phone, and then John Doe showed up to buy the car, and John Doe showed me his license. And John Doe is the same one disputing the transaction. Transactions. So the same, the name is the same on all of it. Yeah, I mean, I can only go off of what they're saying here. You know, I, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I can only go off of what you know the real estate in the letter from Visa Mastercard. All right, and now him, oh, no. it's theft. He stole five hundred dollars from us. So what do you recommend I do? Uh, if you know his location, you know, and get the authorities involved. That's what happened with that car. And God was able to get it, but it took him like you know three or four months. But he told me that yeah, he was able to you know finally get his car back and everything. But yeah, he had to jump through a whole bunch of legal hoops. Okay. Yeah, you're not you're not much help at all. All right. Thank you very much anyway for something, I guess. So I'm gonna call uh, the guy that scammed us out of five hundred dollars on uh, the Corvette. Yeah. Five eight five. Five eight five. Hey, Melvin, Craig Flying Wheels. I was calling to see if you ever got your car registered. I don't have no car. You don't have no car? No, I don't have no car. Where's your car? I don't have a car. You don't have a Corvette anymore? Nope. What happened to no it? Car. I just don't have no car. What happened to it? I just don't have no car. I never had a car. You never had a car. This is Melvin, right? Oh, he hung up on me. Oh my God. That's the people I work with in, in my life. And this is why my wife calls me a dick all the time. I don't oh have no car. God. That's too too soon. I'll call tomorrow if he doesn't answer. Let's see if he answers again. I don't have no car. He probably blocked your number. Oh my God. The power of YouTube, ready? Your call has been forwarded to an automatic... What's his name? Melvin. Melvin what? Johnson. Melvin Johnson from where? Uh, Al Albion, New York. Albion, New York. Took a Corvette from me, and then he's been charging back all of his charges. So that's 
why you need to cover yourself. Right now I'm only out 500, but he really he really tried to work me on every angle. Remember he even thought he paid us in full. Oh, I paid you in full already. You sure all that money's not there? And all the money wasn't sitting on the table, right? So I wrote him a quick text a few weeks ago because he said he was working and he'd be back from work in a few days and would call me and he didn't. And when I did, he answered and then hung up on me after he yelled at me. So I wrote, uh, hey Melvin, it's not fair that you raised your voice and yelled at me. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you lied to me and told me you lost your credit card when in actual, actuality you called your credit card company and lied to them about the $500. I hope you live up to your side and repay the $500 you canceled on me. I'd hate to inform your Corvette club of the type of person you may really be. So I am going to reach out to him one more time and say, hey Melvin, I'm not sure if you're familiar with who I am or what I do for work, period. Uh, if you have a chance, check out Flying Wheels on YouTube, period. I wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that you will be featured in one of our upcoming videos. I appreciate the segment you did for me on camera, and I will be sure to share this story along with your information to the world, period. Unless, of course, you want to take care of it amicably. Thank you, and let's see if he responds. His brother owned a used car dealership, so we want to find out the name of it. He did, yes. So his brother is the first one that called me for Melvin, yeah. and he said, hey, my brother's really interested in this Corvette. Can you give me more information? I own a car dealership. Would you wholesale it to me, and I'll sell it to him? Yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care. And then later on, he said his brother's just going to buy it, yeah. and that's when Melvin came up and uh, called you every single day, right? Actually, how many? tell me the story about Melvin. Oh, he called me at least like five, six times a week, probably once a day. Asking what? Asking about the car, if he can pay with a credit card over the phone, paying cash. And a lot of the times he said, because I don't want to get scammed. Yes. Like he didn't want to get scammed. Yes. So that's usually when people say that, you know. So I just sent him a little text that said, here is how many viewers watch my channel monthly if you want to check it out. And it was a slow month at 1.2 million. That is a fire video. And that's why I'm not even upset. Like people should be exposed for doing stuff like this. And you know, I have like a little bit of clout, which is nice. I can use a little bit of my power for good. And hopefully it saves other people from having to deal with this. If anybody's watching this, you can see what I'm going through and not let it happen to you. And the power of- Crazy I women, I FBI steals. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> we have somebody digging deep oh, into yeah. the files and found his sister on LinkedIn. His brother owns a car dealership in Rochester, New York. Yes. Wow. Let me know when you come up with more information. Don't mess with flying wheels. <laughs> so there's more to the story now that we're talking because it's been a month because we've been going back and forth with the credit card company he was calling say he wanted to put in his sister's name right yes. his sister was gonna sign everything he didn't want it his name because he didn't want his daughters getting it if anything ever happened to him that okay that kind of made sense to me all right fine his kids might have been greedy and he wants to put in his sister's name or maybe he's hiding money and wants it his sister's name that's normal odd but normal so what we did was say all right fine but it's going in both your names. It'll go in your name and your sister's name. So we need her signatures, bring them up with us. I, want, I need originals, not signed like, and I need a copy of her driver's license. So we have a copy of her sister's driver's license, his sister's driver's license. Yes. We have all her original signatures. And then we have Melvin's signatures, Melvin's driver's license, and everything broken down piece by piece. Remember I always say CYA, cover your, but we have the sister's name, whom we found on LinkedIn. Yes. We have his Corvette Club information, or you're looking up the Corvette yeah. Club information, and we're gonna find out the dealer that his brother owns or works for or something. We're gonna get to the bottom of this just for a little bit of fun because people shouldn't get away with this type of stuff. If he's doing it to me, he could do it to you and he could do it to everyone else out there. We're gonna expose this guy, Melvin, today. I put my camera down and before I even get my camera down, Lauren already found the sister's phone number. Now I'm not gonna expose the sister. She, her name is being used in this, but I'm not gonna give out her personal information. But can I have her phone number and we'll give her a call? You have a few numbers, you have her landline. I have her address. Her wireless, her, her address. Her relatives. That that is scary. Yeah. Fast people search yeah. gives you all that information. Yeah. Oh, that's, did you pay for that? No. That was free information? I typed her name into Google. It has her income yeah. and she lives in a three bed, one bath. <sighs> the internet is a scary, scary yeah. place. What's the number? 585. 585. Our calling is not available. Not available. Let's try again. Let's try again. What else do you have? Let's try it again. I just ate a kind bar, so hopefully I don't have a bunch of stuff in my teeth. Into Verizon Wireless. Whoop. The number you Second dialed. number changed. has been changed and disconnected. No Maybe they're just if running scams. Reach this, recording an error, please check the hmm. this lady has how many? Six. This lady has six phone numbers attached to her name. Let's try them. All right, 585. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try phone number number three. Medina, New York. Ooh. The number you dialed is not in service. 
three numbers out of service. All right, number four. Five, eight, five. Mm -hmm. What number is this, number five? Four. four. Number four. has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system is not available at the tone please record your message when you finish recording you may hang up or press one for more options hey Dakara, my name is craig from flying wheels your brother melvin bought a corvette from us in his and your name and there's some fraudulent activity that melvin has done that's affecting you and i just want to see if i can get you out of it and find some type of solution so you don't have anything related to this can you call me back when you get a chance please and thank you i don't think i have introduced anybody yet to Lauren. So Lauren, I just need someone to vouch for me because sometimes people think my stories are fake. Like okay. the stuff I go through, people don't really always believe and they think it's embellished. Who bought the Corvette? Melvin Johnson. Do you remember the phone calls from Melvin Johnson? Yes. All right, so multiple phone calls from Melvin Johnson to my personal cell phone and to Craig's personal cell phone. Um, he would talk to me, ask me questions, and then he would at, call Craig and ask the same exact questions for Craig. All right, and Melvin Johnson, when he showed up, he was nice guy. Nice, very nice guy. Very nice guy. Kind of a pain on the phone. Pain, pain on the phone, but a nice super guy. nice guy. All right. Like almost so nice that you're like that you instant build that trust. Like yeah. you feel like, oh, this is a good guy. Yeah. No problem. My guard is down. Yes. That's what you have to look out for. Yes. So your guard's down. Things start to slide by. That's where you get in trouble. Yes. So. Let's carry on with this story. I know this was a long video and I'm sorry I repeat myself. It was like months, I mean this happened in June, now it's October, so this was months of project headache going on. So I'd get somewhere with it and then we'd like have to pause because we were just waiting to hear back from the credit card company. Then we'd submit paperwork and then we'd wait and then Melvin would say he'd call me Thursday and then he wouldn't. So it's just it's like a two, three month process. I mean here we are, it's still not solved. So. The final solution as of today, he tried to short me on $8,000. I caught him on that. He charged back both credit cards. One credit card, he keyed, like I keyed in over the phone. That was the original deposit for 500. Because we keyed it in, I, I, I'm not protected. So he was able to keep that 500 because he fraudulently said that he lost his card and that charge shouldn't be on there. So they gave that to him, even though I have every document and he signed the receipt when he came into the office and even though I had his driver's license. Because I, because I manually entered, no protection. The other 500 that I swiped when he was here and put on a card, that one I'm protected because I swiped it. It was a chip, so I like plugged the chip in. So lesson learned, like I, I guess you can't really take cards over the phone. You gotta swipe them and the best way is to put the magnetic stripe in. So in all, I lost 500 bucks. It could have been a lot worse. I made a video out of it. Just like, it sucks that I go through this stuff and there's a lot of people out there that are just shysters. This job is, is tough. Like people lie to me all the time and I have to like, sort through all the BS to figure who's lying, who's telling the truth, and and then I have to be on the up and up because they will attack me as soon as I say something wrong. So I gave you a glimpse into the, what, what this world is like to be a car dealer. I hope it was entertaining, informative, useful, educational, whatever. Do me a favor and thumbs ups are always appreciated. And tell me in the comments, is all of that headache worth 500 bucks? Should I just let it go? I mean, give me $500 out of your pocket. That's how I look at it. I don't want to just take $500 out of my pocket and give it to somebody just like you wouldn't. So it's really a bummer. That's like, if I just gave somebody a $500 bonus in the shop, they would have been pumped. That could have been their money right there. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Adios. That was a classic one. That was a classic. I'm so glad the guy get conned it out of 500 bucks. That was a classic. More people should do that to use cars and equipment. You got one. You got what you deserved. You can't, you can't people every day, you scumbag.